Hello, today we're going to do a bit of a deep dive into Ableton's vocoder audio effect. Now, I really like vocoder because it's not just a vocoder, but it can do a lot of interesting sound design. And I just thought it was definitely worth spending a bit of time on this. I'm going to show you the four different carrier options and what this means, what a carrier is, is the modulator. It's the thing that is affecting the sound that's coming in. So in this case, the sound that we're going to use for the vocoder is a synth. Now I like to use this kind of sharp synth sound. It's got really clear and distinctive transients. And the other thing is it doesn't have any spaces, right? I switch on legato just to make sure there's no spaces between any of the um, notes. So if we select carrier and then we'll go through all the other options first, but we'll go through the classic vocoder first, which is external. So we're modulating carrier, which is this voice to the synth that we just heard earlier. So if we just listen to the voice on its own without the vocoder on it, it's just a random set of vocals they're not even in tune with the synth. They're just random and they come from splice. Sun comes up over the hill. Okay, so you got a feeling there how they sound. So we'll just activate the vocoder now. And this is what you get straight away. So we may want to deactivate the synth channel so we just hear the vocoder. So you have all these options. We're going to start on the left-hand side and then just move to the right-hand side. You start with unvoiced. So unvoiced sets the volume of an unvoiced noise generator. It's a noise oscillator. So let's just increase the unvoiced option here. And sensitivity, it just shows you the detection of that noise generator. Okay, so you've got this kind of option which makes things a little bit clearer I guess than just standard unvoiced and then you have fast smooth that just adjusts how quickly the vocoder toggles between the voiced and unvoiced detection so let's just go slow so we'll just listen to that it's a bit smoother when it's slow Excellent. So we're just going to keep a bit of unvoiced on. And then the next thing you'll see here are all these little underlines, and these are bands. We, by default, get 20 bands. But if you go to the minimum, four bands, you have these four different band options. And all they do is represent the frequency range of the synth sounds that are coming in divided by four. And the range is on the next bit. So it starts at 12 kilohertz and ends up at um, 80 hertz uh, by default. Default. So let's just take a listen to the same sound but with four bands and then we'll change the bands just to so you can hear the difference. So it's just broken the vo the vocal down into four frequency bands. And we can go to the maximum. So it's broken down that range by 40 bands. And obviously that's going to sound clearer because it's split the bands in much more smaller ranges. Now we can select the start and end ranges in terms of the high frequency and the lowest frequency in terms of filter in the bank. So let's just listen and re increase the range here. That's a bit thinner there. Okay, so you can manage the range and the bands will be just distributed across that range. And then you have this bandwidth. So if we go back to four, the size of these bands are that size, but we could reduce them say to 50%. So it's only gonna play in that middle with a 50%, but it's still gonna play four bands. So just increase that to about 50. So it's not going to play the entire frequency range, just the 50% of that range. And if you go over 100%, the bands will cross over each other. Sound a bit muddy. Okay, and we'll just double click to bring that back to 100 because it sounds best like that. And if we do the same thing with 40 bands, they're just going to be really thin sounding if we reduce the bandwidth. And then we have this precise option and retro option. So precise just does exactly mathematically what the vocoder is telling you, but retro is just a bit more not as accurate. It's a bit more random and analogy. 
And then we can click on this enhance button. What that does is it normalizes the volume levels of the bands. So what that really means is the bands themselves are very distributed by volume between the top and the lowest band. The normalization will lower the volumes at the extreme ends of the bands. Let just take a listen. Sun comes up over the hill. It just gives you a bit of a smoother sound. And what gate does is it looks at every individual band. If the volume of that band is over a certain value, it will just not play. So the more we re increase this, it'll just filter out certain bands. And if it gets too high, you barely hear anything. And then level is the volume level of the whole thing. And then we have depth. So what this does is it just controls how much of the modulator's amplitude envelope is applied to the carrier signal. So at 0%, the envelope is discarded, and at 200%, only the high peaks will be used. So let's just take a listen. Sun comes up over the hill. So you can almost hear the synth there playing. And by the way, that synth is constantly playing. Then we have attack. So that's just how fast the vocoder responds to amplitude changes. So this will be a really slow attack. So it's just going to smooth out the sound. And then release is just how fast it goes back to zero. So the higher the release, kind of the more lush the vocoder will sound. And obviously the lower the release, the more the really tired of the sound is. And format, what that does is it takes that range and it just increases it or decreases it by the range. So just take another listen. The way I find format works really well is if you have a naturally high range, so to say, then you reduce the formant. It sounds just a bit more balanced. And the other way around, if you have it the other way around where the range is much higher, uh, much lower, sorry, uh, and you increase the formant, it sounds more clearer that way. Okay, so there are all the format range options that you have. And then you have uh, these settings, mono, stereo, and LR. All this does is it says that the both the modulator and the carrier are going to be mono here. And then you have the modulator state in mono if we select this one, but the carrier is in stereo. And then both are in stereo. So the dry wet knob here, if we just uh, reduce that, you'll hear a bit of the original vocal. Now this will work better if the vocal is actually in key with the synth, but I didn't check that and they're actually not in key. So they will sound a bit off. Now the use case for vocoder is obviously uh, the fact that it is a great backing vocal and I've used it in plenty of songs too. So here we've got both signals in stereo. And the last thing I almost forgot to tell you was when you select your band options, you can actually change the band options by using the pencil tool and they act almost like a multi-band compressor. So you can cut some of the frequencies and you can draw frequencies like this. And obviously if you had only four bands and it can get very accurate like this. Okay, so now let's go and check out some of the other options. So sticking with that vocal, but we're going to get rid of that external carrier and just use noise. So right now we don't have that synth, even though it's, well, it's no longer playing. <laughs> even though the synth is there, it's going to now use a noise oscillator as the carrier. So here it's quite, quite different. We'll just reduce the unvoiced because that's also a noise oscillator. 
and we can just change the amount of bands. And same thing, you can reduce or change the frequency settings. So I find that noise carrier works best with mono. And it's kind of like this, a bit of a sharp effect on the vocal. You can increase the format. You can, it's exactly the same as what I just showed. You can slow the release or make it really fast. And the, it's increase the attack. Change the range. Reduce the bandwidth. So there you go, that's noise carrier. And then you've got modulator, which is really interesting. Modulator is basically using itself as the source. So the vocal itself is the source of modulation for the carrier. Up over the hill. So let's change some of these settings. So we talked about the settings a bit earlier. We'll bring that to stereo. So we just make this completely wet so we don't hear the original vocal. So you just change the frequency range that you can hear. And because you're only hearing the affected vocal, you can really um, thin it out. It's almost like an EQ. But the difference between this and an EQ is you can select the bands and the amount of control you have. So in that case, it's actually a little bit more like a multi-band compressor actually than an EQ. So let's just bring this back to 24 bands. And because it's a really high frequency range, we're going to reduce the form and increase the volume. Remove the unvoiced. And just bring that dry wet down a bit. So here you've got the backing vocal being like a male vocal almost. Okay, so that's modulator. And then you've got pitch tracking, which is similar to noise, but it's just changing the pitch sound. So let's just listen to how they sound with the different oscillators. So it's just bending the sounds based on these oscillators, and then you can change the pitch. And you've got your start and end range. Once again, blending that vocal back in, changing some of the frequency. Now, that's pretty much it for the different types of carrier and ranges that we have. But as you can tell, some of these work better for vocals than other, but you will want to use these vocoders on maybe different instruments or even drums. So for example, if we take this pitch tracking sound, just copy, right click, right -click and copy that to a drum sound. So we just paste that here. you'll have a lot more interesting sound options here. Let's just reduce the gate. So it's only going to apply the modulated sound to the highest frequency volume on the gate, which is really cool. You can increase the volume of that. And let's just change the depth. So that's a pretty cool little use case for that. And similarly with noise, you can really get some really big, thick sounds going with noise. Reduce that format. And let's just try modulator. You can get it sounding really fat there.
Right. So that's a vocoder on a drum. And let's just get it on a instrumental sound here. Let's increase the format of that. So we we'll just reduce the the lower levels there. Increase the gate. So once you get the sound that you like, then you can start adding some reverb and that starts to make it sound really nice. So let's just add a simple reverb to that vocoder. We'll do a low cut there. Let's add a delay. So as you can tell, that sounds really nice. And once you can get the sound that you want, you can really make your track pop and sound super fantastic. So I hope you enjoyed this video. It's a bit longer than what I've been doing recently. So thank you and all the best.